Well, welcome back, guys, to the Power Half Hour, and uh, it is episode 137. And today, i um, super excited. Uh, it's a new friend that we have. Uh, it's a new agent here at EXP with us, and I'm so excited to introduce him today. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to butcher your last name, but Alexis Valadares. That was really good. That was really oh, good. Okay. That was really good. Yes, sir. <laughs> Thank you and welcome, sir. So we met on Instagram, believe it or not, guys, yes. and uh, just a dynamite of a guy. Uh, we've already had him speak at Lisbon, uh, Portugal. Uh, and so today, welcome to our show. Uh, Alexis, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, so I appreciate you having me first and foremost, John. It's kind of, uh, an honor to be on here with you. I've been following you for a while, and obviously I'm, I'm happy that I'm teamed up with you guys now at, at EXP, and I think we're going to freaking take over, bro. I, I wow. said it on stage. I was like, man, 90,000 agents? Like, what is this? This is nothing. we got to take over. we got to take over the entire planet. So I'm excited. I have, uh, I'm obviously very uh, ambitious, and, and I want to blow this company out of the water with, with the top people like yourself. Um, I've been in the industry for four years. I, I did my own personal production for about three and a half years. I launched a team. I wow. tried to scale you know, a personal team, uh, learned a lot in that experience, and then now I'm doing full-time sales training, not to make it too long of an introduction. Yeah. Um, I'm doing full-time sales training. I've been in entrepreneurship since I was like 13 years old, literally. Wow. Like I, I was always trying to you know, wholesale stuff from Alibaba. I don't know if you know that website. Yes. yes. I would grab like chargers, headphones. Uh, I would fix and flip phones. Like I'd have my friends give me their phones in school, fix a screen, sell it pop the trunk open after school, sell whatever I could, man. So I always had that mentality. Um, my parents, my dad was an entrepreneur and he, you know, did different business. So that kind of inspired me. Um, and it was, it was really tough. It was really tough for a long time before real estate, a lot of trial and tribulation, which I think mm. built up the character that I need to build up to get here. And I, I mean, I always say this when someone asks me, you know, how did you get here? I made a simple decision, John. In 2020, I said, I'm going to do this for five years, whether it works or not. I'm going to dedicate myself five years to becoming the best possible real estate professional I can be. I don't know where it's going to take me, but I'm going to be the yeah. best I can. And I'm going to give it five years because I bounced around a lot of different industries. When, when things wouldn't work out, I'd run. So mm. for our audience watching, I think it's very important. I think you can probably attest to this. You need to be consistent for a long enough period of time to mm. be able to finally hit your breakthrough. A lot of people give up before the breakthrough happens. So, uh, you know, year two went great, uh, year three went great, and now we're, we're into year four, and I'm, I'm happily, you know, doing sales training, coaching, and I'm a big Love believer it. in one thing. So I no longer do personal production in that say. I obviously have a personal team that I, I delegate business off to, but I'm just focusing on Perfect. growing my organization and, and building it out with you guys at DXP. That's phenomenal. Uh, you're a young guy, it, it looks like, um, but how young are you? 27 years young. 27 years old. Wow. Yeah. Hey, Alexis, just, just to give you an idea, that's about when I started real, in real estate. Wow. Yeah. And now it's been almost 19 years in, in the game. You don't look like you're 19 <laughs> years older than 27, I'll tell you that. And you're crushing the gym. You're eating healthy. I love your videos on the rice. That's awesome. Uh, bro. Like It's so funny. Thank uh, you, brother. I appreciate you're, you're, it. You're in shape, bro. You look great, man. You, you look, thank you. Look awesome. you. Thank you. And uh, man, I got a lot of questions for you because uh, yeah. such, a young, such a young guy, only four years in the business. My first question for you is like, how did you get so good at the scripts and dialogues and the objection handling? Because it takes years. And for some, for most, I would say to master something is uh, 10,000 hours of practice mm -hmm. and repetition. For you, it didn't take that long. Are you a natural born salesperson? Oh, that's a, that's an interesting topic. I think some people are born with some sort of ability to communicate, but like mm. anything else, when I got thrown into the game, it was like, hey, here's a script book and here are the numbers, make phone calls, right? Most people, the, the period of time between the, the moment of the aha, I got to do this, to the moment they actually execute it for long enough, most people don't get there. So mm. uh, the second I got into my first real estate office, I had a 90-day goal to get out of my part-time job. They gave me a script book. I took 30 minutes to look over some for sale by owner scripts. Wow. And I just got on the phone, man. I just got on the phone, John, and I got told a million different things. And I started yes. writing down the objections. I started writing down what maybe did work a little bit and what maybe didn't work. And I, I started just ripping phone calls every single day until it started kind of getting better and better. And I started really consuming content from the best people in the industry at the time and just compounding my efforts and, and really embracing the rejection because I think rejection mm. is the best form of correction. So I just yeah. started embracing that and I knew that it wasn't going to be easy and I got around the right people. I understood the term of proximity and getting around mm. people that had the results that you wanted to have and I, I was relentless with the execution, bro. 
That's it. It's it. I mean, anybody can develop the skill. The, the hard part, John, is not handling the objection or knowing what to say. It's being able to pick up the phone when you don't want to pick up the phone, go to the appointment when you don't feel like going to the appointment, and doing it after you got rejected 100, 200, 300 times. That's mm. the hard part. It's all mental. It's not. The, the, I know exactly what to say to any single objection. You know, agree, acknowledge, isolate, tie down, close. Get really good at that, and you're you're straight. You're good. But when when you don't feel like doing it, and no one's watching, and it's okay to just quit and give up that day, who are you? Mm. You know. So I think that's where it really comes into play, and that's something that you got to be training all the time. That mental uh, fortitude. Uh, it's not about the objection handlers or the scripts. It's just about what you got going on up here. I, I always say that the most important dialogue that you need to have is with yourself before you pick up the phone. Right. Right. And I love what you said about relentless uh, execution. Uh, most agents give up way too easily. And I think the 87% give up before two years is the number. And you kept with it and you had a great year two, year three, and now here you are year four. Why do you think most people give up? I don't think they have the reason why they're doing it identified clearly enough because it's, a, it, it's, it's an either or, and I talk mm. about this a lot, it's a fear of, right? Either you have the fear of getting rejected and the fear of not making it in the business or you have yeah. the fear of not being able to provide for the people that you love and mm. for whatever reason you, you're, you were brought on this planet for. So it's the fear of which fear is greater, right? When you realize that the fear of not doing this is bigger than the fear of just getting told no on the phone or in person or maybe not reaching your goals a certain year, this fear immediately overrides. Yeah. So when, wow. when you when you when you're able to get into that mental state before the call, because today I was cold calling today, and there's you know I'm cold calling high level brokers and big teams that have three, four, five hundred agents, you know, to try to build out our organizations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And these are people that are probably worth multiple seven figures. Right. So I told my, I told one of my, my my guys, I was like, ah, I'm a little nervous, but you just kind of like get in the self talk. Like, oh, what's the worst thing that can happen? They just say no. Right. Oh, okay, perfect. What's the best thing that can happen? We have a meeting. They join EXP. We build out a massive organization. Boom. Love that. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just a yeah. mental thing that happens, and, and we all go through it. I think people think that people like you and I are robots, yeah. and that we just, you know, you go to the gym at 4:30 every day because we're just perfect. No, it's like yeah. when when the alarm clock goes off, we don't want to do it. But yeah. if something takes over, and the self talk is like it overrides the fear of not doing it or the fear of being tired later on in the day or whatever. So, oh my um, goodness. It, it, it's I talk a lot about mindset. It's all mental. You got to. I think it's 90 percent in in real estate and. You know, most young people like yourself, they quit way too easily. Um, I always ask this question almost at the end of the interview, but I'll ask it now because I want to know, what, what's your why? Well, right now, specifically my why is, it, number one, the, the, the easiest way to describe it is just trying to figure out how to become the best version of myself, and that's an mm -hmm. ever-going journey. Um, and, you know, my parents are Cuban immigrants, so they came from Cuba, they fled communism. Wow. And there wasn't much opportunity for them. Mm. And when I when I put, you know, as I got older and I, and I got a little bit wiser and I put things into perspective, they gave me the biggest opportunity ever, which was being born in the United States and uh, just having an opportunity, John. You know what I'm saying? Like just having the opportunity to worry about being better and not mm. just surviving. So I feel like a moral obligation to just be be able to make them proud, provide for them, take care of them the way they took care of me. And eventually, I want to have kids. I want to have kids, and I want my kids to look up and say, you know, that that is my superhero, and, wow. and that's it, bro. It, 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 you know, once you reach a certain level of income, once you feel a certain level of things, you know that it's not that what you're going after. Yeah. What you're going after is much bigger than that. I love that. Wow, uh, the opportunity to be able to create an extraordinary life that your parents never had in Cuba. Right. They came over here gave you an opportunity and you're certainly not going to let it go and that's what drives you forward every single day wow i feel obligated john I, it's wow. like an, ob it's I like an obligation that. that i never felt it's crazy because a lot of people it's all about timing I w i'm 27 years old you know i could yeah. easily just be trying to still figure it out which i still feel like every day i'm trying to figure it out it's crazy right. um but when i was like 21 i was just kind of wandering i was trying i was trying to do different businesses and different ventures mm -hmm. but when it got hard i would give up because I didn't feel obligated to something bigger than myself. So what was the difference this time in real estate? Uh, I think I pushed myself. Uh, you know, back in 20, 2019, I, I used to carry golf bags. I used to caddy. And I pushed myself to a really uncomfortable position that I didn't want to mm -hmm. be in, which was moving to Wisconsin, which is like right below Canada, I think. Mm -hmm. Freezing cold, bro. I had no money. Um, I was carrying golf bags 14 hours a day. People were looking oh. at me like an object. And for me, that was like kind of like my rock bottom, you know, because I mm. knew I had the ability to communicate. I knew I had the ability to sell. And 
you you won't move out of a place unless you get extremely uncomfortable there and like the the pain is is big enough where you're like I gotta move now. So that was my 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 turning point. I was like I'm so sick and tired of people looking at me this way and I know I'm better. So I'm, I'm gonna really commit to embracing the hardships and when it gets hard I'm gonna make sure I stay there. That's why I made a decision. Like you know we talk about love as a decision when when things get rough with your partner you still gotta decide to stay there and fix it. Yeah. It's the same thing with business. It's not that feeling of like the next day when you come up with a new script or a new objection handler and it doesn't work. You got to figure out who you are when it doesn't work, not when it's going great, you know? So it was just a decision. It was a decision that you made that uh, after you felt enough pain, yep. therefore you took massive action. You decided, to, you know what, uh, I'm not going to quit this time. And yeah. uh, I'm, we are so glad that you found... What you're really good at and you kept with. Um, this yeah. is, wow. And mm -hmm. such a, uh, obviously people only see the four years here in real estate. Right. But it was a journey of, you know, being an entrepreneur from the age 13 to now. That's 14 years of the grind that we right. didn't see. Right. And people always say like, oh, that guy's an overnight success. And it seemingly right. is. But it's a, it took 14 years to become an overnight success. So a big congratulations to you. Right. I'm I appreciate so happy that. For you. I appreciate, and we're nowhere near. You know, I know from the outside it looks like, uh, you know, to, to be honest, like I, I, I would, I would have never thought I would have gotten this far, this quick, especially now. With, I didn't. The sales training wasn't a plan. You know, it just kind of happened. Um, but we always want that more, more, more. And and you know, old me would have been proud of me, but now the the goals have been completely shifted, and it's a much bigger vision. That that's beyond just me. You know, it's about impacting and, and growing other people because. When I was 17, you know, I, I don't know what your background is, and I would love to, you know, one day chop that up and, and figure out more about how you got here. But a lot of people at the age of like 15, 16, 17 around me, they, they had these visions that they wanted to like not go to school or not do the normal trajectory in life and do something bigger, but they were scared to just execute on it. Mm. So I always told myself, like, I want to figure out a way to push those people to do it because, bro, I was relentless. Like when I was 15, 16, I was going against the curb. Mm. I was, you know, trying to drop out of high school trying to start a business I had 18 I had I was operating a, a car wash business with like 40 employees wow. not knowing what the heck I was doing wow. but I was always trying so at one point I was like you know I looked up one day and I was on, on on stage I was like holy shit I'm doing exactly what I said I wanted to do when I was 15 wow so it, it's it's crazy but there's so many more levels to it and there's so many different topics that I've learned through those years that I'm sure you've learned as well to get to the point that you're at now that were lessons. That's why it's not an overnight success. You know, mm -hmm. failing on that 40 employee car wash business was a massive learning lesson. Now building out an organization, hiring people, firing people, etc. So it, it takes decades, bro. It takes decades. I think so. And uh, so glad to be on this journey uh, with you, building the company with you. And, you know, all those things that you've experienced in the past brought you to who you are today. So, you know, Coming to the company now, what's what's next for you? Next five, ten years, what does that look like for Alexis? Yeah, uh, that's a great question. And whenever I get that question, my only answer to that is my, my only goal is to just become the number one real estate sales trainer in the entire world and Love build out that. the biggest organization at EXP over the next five years. That that is the Love goal that. defined in one sentence. And you know, the the thing with people that they can draw from me is that whether or not that that happens, I'm gonna get really freaking close. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, like whether or not it happens just like that in that time period or whatever, I'm going to get really freaking close. But a yeah. lot of people are scared to like voice out what they think can happen out loud because of what yeah. people are going to think about them. Because from the time that I really truly become the number one sales trainer, it, it could take a long time, right? But if you continue to believe that, say it, act like it, do it, and really put in the work behind it, it it'll happen. Mm -hmm. Most people will say, no, I need 10 years, 15 years, 20 years for that to happen. But I, I, I'm a big believer in voicing out things into the universe. You know, Conor McGregor says, if you can see yeah. it here and you speak it with courage, yeah. it, it'll, it'll happen. So th that's what I got going on for me. I love EXP. I've been through, through four different brokerages and EXP has always been in the back of my mind and I, mm -hmm. I, I'm at the right people. And the collaborative space is so important to me because there's so many agents out there that don't have the tools and resources to close the deals that they should be closing. Mm -hmm. that I, mm -hmm. I love that we're in this industry and in this space and, and that EXP is structured the way it's structured. I'm super excited. Yeah, it's definitely changed the industry, not only in the fact that it is cloud-based, um, you right. know, that we give agents equity, revenue share, CRM, but the word collaboration is something that I really experienced once I got here. But I came here for the three very specific benefits that are stated 
financially, but the collaboration you have to feel once you get right. here. Um, in the Florida, you're in Florida, Miami. Yep. Okay. It is like the red ocean of the cloud-based brokerage competition. Okay. LPT, you have Real, you have Epic, um, you have all sorts of other ones, and then we have EXP, which is the original. You must have done your own research. Why sure. EXP? So I want to be the best, right? So I got to be around the best, and the best mm. are at EXP. I, I don't know anybody, you know, and I don't want to offend anybody with this. I personally just don't know anybody that's significant in the trading mm. space that's not with EXP. The best of the best are with EXP, yes. right? Your name comes up, you know, Ricky's name comes up. I think Aaron's names come up. His, 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 his stuff is great. There's a lot of great people that we might not even be talking about in this conversation that are with EXP. And, uh, you know, I now met Michael. Michael's freaking phenomenal. Uh, Felix is phenomenal. Legend, man. That, uh, <laughs> Leo's awesome. And the yeah. leadership behind the company is, is great. You know what I'm saying? They it. didn't get to 90,000 agents by accident. And they're not going to get to 200,000 agents by accident. It's going to happen because of the people that are in the company. So I, I, I believe it, man. I believe it 100%. And, you know, I, I, I'm not a big brokerage pusher. My thing is, and I've told, you know, Felix this very directly. I'm like, I want to put an agent in the best position possible for them mm. to sell more homes. Whether that be on my platform and a different brokerage or my platform and the brokerage, just the brokerage, not my platform. Whatever that is, bro, Doesn't I'm matter. just happy that we have the opportunity to provide a better platform for certain agents, you know? That's very inspiring. I like that. It's not about the platform. Um, at the yeah. end of the day, you don't you don't you don't want, to, don't want to push anything. It's just whatever is the best for that agent. Correct. And it may not be ours, and it's totally okay. The, yeah. the cool thing with EXP though is that I think the platform makes sense for most agents, because you might not like me, but they might love you. Mm -hmm. Or they might love me and might not like you, but they right. can learn from both. You know what I'm saying? It, exactly. it benefits everybody mutually to to be collaborative, which is the word that I continue to use and continue to feel. Now I was out in Lisbon and I and I felt that word, you know, I, I felt the meaning of that word. I'm going to, I'm back out to the UK now in July to speak at another EXP conference. Awesome. And I'm excited because everybody's just sharing, you know, visions, everybody's sharing resources and tools and, and it's awesome. It's awesome for agents that don't know where where they're going. Well, I'm I'm so glad you're here. I'm so glad you picked us because you could have been massively successful anywhere, any platform. Appreciate that. Um, and and this is this is it for you right now. Uh, and we hope uh, you know you you blow it up with us here. Uh, over a hundred thousand, two hundred thousand. Uh, tell me about the interaction with Michael Valdez because that seems like a very interesting dynamic there. So he's he's loud. He's energetic, just like I am. <laughs> uh, he crushed it on stage in Lisbon, and. I, you know, I'm going to be honest, he's probably going to watch this. Before our podcast, I was like, I don't know, you know, like, I, I, I saw the Instagram and I was like, you know, this is just an, probably another chief growth officer of a massive company, you know, yeah, whatever. Yeah. And the second I started talking to him at the podcast, I was like, oh, man, I like this guy. Yeah. Genuine guy, you know, likes what he does, uh, cares about the company, cares about the vision, very experienced person, knows exactly what he's doing. And, you know, I wouldn't really want anybody else leading the, the growth department in this company. Yes, I, I think he's the perfect person for, for what he's doing. And, and I love it. Uh, we've interacted a lot. We've talked quite a few times. And I'm, I'm, I'm excited, man. I'm excited to be on board with him. I love it. I love it. He was uh, selling real estate back in the day, 2004, in Miami. You were telling me some stories. Yeah, you were seven years old. <laughs> I know. I know. I know. Which just, <clears throat> it excites me because... It's so young and, and, you know, at least I, I feel like there's so much more ahead for all of us. You know, there's, I think EXP is just starting. I don't know. I just I feel like it's just getting good. There's such a bigger cap space in my brain for this company. And that's why I say, you know, I said it on stage. I was like, 90,000 ages, Glenn. I was like, come on. <laughs> you, know, that's, you know, that's just me, you know, being funny. But there, there's so much more room for, for, for growth, 100%. Well, we can count on a few thousand from you right away. I could see it. So, oh, you know, well, let's, for let's sure, one hundred percent. And grow. whatever we can do to take over Canada, um, I would love to dive into your market, learn, and and I want to take over globally, man. I I think the the way that people make decisions all around the world is the same. Some markets vary. There's different things, different laws, regulations, etc. But yes. I think the way the human brain is wired to make a decision is is the same. Mm -hmm. So as long as we can influence these people, these these realtors, on how to properly, you know qualify clients, present to clients, structure a business, leverage themselves, create a team, etc. I think it, it'll, it'll ultimately help everybody out. I think so. I think we have the best platform. We have the best agents, um, yeah, the most productive, that's for sure. Statistically now, proven. 
as well. Yeah, it, it's, a, it's a no-brainer, really. Um, going forward, it's been a last, last couple of years been very volatile for most agents. We've had a 40% drop in sales, and we've only had probably 5 to 10% drop in agent count. So the per agent production, and there's just not as many homes going around to agents. What's your best advice in today's market for agents to be able to crush the rest of 2024? Great question. I think it's building a, a, a skill set. You know, it's not relying on your team leader, not relying on your broker, not relying on a platform, but building a skill set where you can wake up and go out there and identify leads and just go ahead and, you know, I, I think cold calling is if you're a solo agent and you want to get into team production and leveraging and stuff like that, the quickest way and most efficient way to do it is to pick up the phone and make a phone call. Whether you want to label it cold call, warm call, whatever the case is, identify a good group of leads that can help you close business in the next 90 days and figure out a way to have a good conversation with them and figure out whether or not you can help them with their real estate needs. It, it's really as simple as that. Do that over and over again. You know, whenever I go, like, I, I was out in Lisbon, so I couldn't cold call for, like, a few days because of the time difference. I got back in the office yesterday, and I made some calls in front of a couple of other guys on my team, and I'm like, man, why, why are we doing this every day? Like, we just call for an hour. We talk to 12, 15 people, and it's like, right. wow, business out of nowhere. Right. You know, out of nowhere. It's just, it's just like... But it, it's not easy, uh, John. You got to build up the skill set to be able to disarm someone. To uh, you know, we're not going to do an entire sales training here, but um, <laughs> maybe if you got some space for me at Build Twenty Four, we'll, we'll go out there and do a, a sales training. Oh, uh, dude. We'll, we'll we'll do the next one for sure. But there's so much to like unravel with when it comes to sales and phone calls. But I think that's the best way to do it. To answer your question, is build a skill set, build a mindset that it, that'll be able to. Uh, Challenge yourself in the toughest markets. 2021 was a very easy market, I think. That's when I got thrown into it. It was very easy. Mm, but if you can yeah. thrive in the difficult markets, what's yes. going to happen when the market gets better? Right? Oof. So embrace this. This is the biggest opportunity for agents the next two or three years. Love that. The biggest opportunity when the market goes up, hopefully you have leverage, hopefully you have a database. And from there, you can you know leverage yourself, build a team, build systems, and hopefully exit, right? So I love that. And, and, and it comes back to you, you got to start with the skill set, just like you said. And I always say that skills pay the bills. Mm. And once you have that skill set, you can do anything you want. And when your skills are better, your mindset is better, which is what we talked about 90% right. of the game. Now, how do agents reach out to you uh, if they want more of your content and want your sales training? Uh, I appreciate that. Yeah. So if you go on my Instagram, it's just my name, Alexis Violatis. On the link in my bio, it's it's a landing page. You put your information in and you'll get emailed a free link uh, to my school platform. We have an entire, obviously, paid school platform, but we have a section that you can enter for free. It has about, I would say, probably 30 or 40 hours of free content that, honestly, if you're resourceful, you can use that and you can start closing deals right away. I have agents all around the world for free on there closing deals. So if you want to access my school platform, you can do it for free on my on my bio on, my, on Instagram. If you guys want to figure out, you know, how to train uh, a little bit more personal with me, just go ahead and reach out to my Instagram and someone on my team will connect with them and, and figure out whether or not it makes sense. I love it. I love it. Well, thank you, Alexis. Uh, sure. Big congratulations, uh, you know, in your young career, already crushing it. And uh, welcome officially to EXP. Thank you for partnering with us. Uh, any last insight for the audience? Uh, guys, I, th I think we're in the right industry. If you're not with EXP, you know, I'm going to ask you, why aren't you with EXP yet? At least explore the topic because when, when I when I first heard of EXP, I was like, hell no, I'm never going to be at EXP. That multi-level marketing, I'm not going to do that, right? That was my first initial thought. But if you haven't at least hopped on, on YouTube and just checked out a video to try to understand the model, reach out to myself, reach out to John, and just ask questions, guys. You, if you think you know it all, that is exactly where you go wrong. Just ask questions. At the end of the day, we're not going to force you to do anything. No one's going to do that. Just ask questions. Educate yourselves. This is an amazing platform. Ask yourself, why are so many top-level people in this space a part of this company? This is where the pros go to grow. Thank you, Alexa, for today, for today. And we'll chat with you soon. I'll see you yep. in Miami. Yes, see you, John. Thank you for yes, having sir. me. Yes, sir. We'll see you soon. Oh.